One of my pillars to successful shrimp keeping is water parameters within range. What does this really mean? Welcome everyone, it's Ray from RW Aquarium Pages, capturing my journey in plant aquariums, aquascaping, shrimp tanks, and everything in between. Honestly, shrimp keeping, planted tanks, breeding fish, marine and reef aquariums, it's basically all about managing water and water parameters. Many fish keepers do use tap water but that's a value that differs and can change from everyone's tap water. The tap water in my city versus the city next door and the city next door over is significantly different. Water parameters within range is very important as fish, plants, and shrimp thrive within a certain range. It goes as far as health-wise as they live and absorb nutrients within the water and the water chemistry dictates that. There are very hardy fishes, plant, and shrimp that can survive and thrive in a wide range. Generally speaking, plants have a wider range than fish, and fish have a wider range acceptable than shrimp. pH, GH, KH, TDS, temperature are all very important parameters and values. But what do all these mean? The five that I mentioned are all very important. There's other values that are important, such as nitrate, nitrite, and ammonia. And there's more detailed values, such as copper and phosphate. I'll cover those items in the next video. There are three main types of shrimp water parameters, but first, check with the breeder that you're receiving the shrimp from, and check what their values are, and try to be as close as possible. For example, the orange eye blue tigers there's an Asian version that breeds in soft water, and there's a German version that breeds in harder water. The key thing is within range, and do not chase numbers. For example, a TDS of 135, and you're trying to chase it to 130 parts per million, you can easily under or overshoot it. The inconsistency will stress the shrimp out. Once they're stressed, they will weaken and possibly die shortly afterwards something we would all like to avoid. We will go over some common beginner water parameters that successful shrimp keepers monitor regularly. pH is the power of hydrogen. It is used to measure how acidic or basic the water or the liquid is. It's on a log scale from 0 to 14, where a 7 is being neutral. Below 7 is acidic, and above 7 is basic. Some common examples of acidic liquids are pop and citric juices, which have a pH of approximately 3.5. Examples of basic liquids are Drano, and that has a pH of 11. I'll mention more ideal ranges for shrimp shortly. The hardness of water is measured in three ways. GH for general hardness, KH for carbonate hardness, and a combination of GH and KH can be measured by TDS, Total Dissolved Solids. GH and KH is usually measured in degrees of hardness, BKH. Around 0 to 8 GH is soft, and 8 to 20 is hard as an approximation. GH, General Hardness, it's the measure of magnesium and calcium dissolved in water. KH, carbonate hardness, is the measure of carbonates and bicarbonates dissolved in the water. KH, or carbonate hardness, relates to pH because it prevents your pH from changing as quickly. TDS, total dissolved solids, is a measure of all organic and inorganic material in molecular form in your water. This includes GH, KH, nitrate, nitrite, etc. Since they're in the molecular form, TDS, or total dissolved solids, can be simply explained as the substances that cannot be picked up by your filters. Generally, TDS is measured in ppm, parts per million, 
and below 200 is considered soft, and above 200 parts per million is considered hard. For example, for Caradina shrimp, mine prefers a TDS of around 150 parts per million, and you can divide that by 17.9, and that gives me a GH of about 8.4. The KH is zero, since I use RODI, reverse osmosis deionized water, which has a base of zero, and when I remineralize, I just add GH booster, and it has zero KH for Caradina or bee shrimp. We'll illustrate and go through a few more examples of GH, KH, and TDS shortly. Temperature is also very important. There's generally more dissolved oxygen in cooler water than in warmer water. Caradina shrimp generally does better in cooler water, and Neocaradina in slightly warmer water. And the Silhouette Caradina shrimp does better in much warmer waters. Generally speaking, there are three common categories of shrimp. Neocaridina, Caridina, and Silhouette I personally kept and bred all three types successfully. Let's explain the ranges in terms of pH, GH, KH, TDS, and temperature. Neocaridina, which includes the common cherry shrimp, Bloody Mary, Blue Dreams, Green Jade, Black Rose, Red Really, Orange Pumpkin, Painted Fire Reds, and many others. They like a slightly higher than normal than neutral pH and slightly harder water compared to Caradina. Here are their ideal values that I personally keep my Neo Caradina shrimp in. The pH is around 6.8 to 7.5. The GH is 6 to 8 degrees of hardness. The KH is 2 to 5 degrees of hardness. The TDS is 200 to 250 parts per million. And the temperature is 21 to 25 degrees Celsius or 70 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. I find that Neocaridina shrimp do better in warmer waters than Caridina shrimp. Caridina shrimp, which includes crystal red and black, Powan Bee, Pintos, Red and Black Galaxy Fishbone, for some example. The pH is slightly lower, at 5.8 to 6.4. The GH, I keep mine in 4 to 8 degrees of hardness, and the KH is 0 to 1 degrees of hardness. The TDS is around 110 to 150 parts per million. The temperature is a little bit cooler, from 20 to 24 degrees Celsius, or 68 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. In nature, they do come from cooler waters and generally do well without a heater and in room temperatures. Silhouette shrimp, quite stunning and very nice, but they require soft water and higher pH. I keep mine in these approximate water parameters, similar to their wild habitats. Some of the species are more tolerable, like the Silhouette cardinals, the white socks, and some are more finicky, like the Silhouette harlequin. The water conditions I keep them at are the pH from 7.6 to 8.4, the general hardness, GH, from 4 to 6 degrees of hardness, the KH from 2 to 4 degrees of hardness, and the TDS 100 to 150 parts per million. Notice that they're a little bit softer. The temperature is from 27 to 29 degrees Celsius, which is 82 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit. These parameters are similar to their natural lake environments. These are my approximate water parameter values, where they thrive and breed successfully and happily. You can divide and multiply the approximation to convert parts per million to dKH by 17.9. Using tap water isn't an issue once you've gotten rid of the chlorine and chloramine, but it's usually not a base of zero and varies from everybody's tap water to tap water. I have a video about shrimp keeping in tap water, the link is above. The most ideal scenario is to use RODI water, which has a base of 0 GH, 0 KH, and 0 TDS, a flat base of 0. And then you'll remineralize with a GH booster for Caradina, or GH and KH booster for Neocaridina and Siloation shrimp. 
The remineralizer adds GH and KH in ratios specific for the shrimp to thrive. Some brands of remineralizer salts have more vitamins in them than others. Most people start out using tap water, and that's fine, as I didn't have RODI water when I first started. But when I got more serious into keeping shrimp and wanting them to thrive, I got myself an RODI unit and the results, the survival of my shrimp, was much better. The RODI unit basically strips everything out of the water that has a KH, GH, and TDS of zero. A zero base is important when adding remineralizers. Shrimp can survive and thrive outside these ranges that I've mentioned, but in all honesty, it's not as ideal. You will need test kits to measure pH, GH, KH, and TDS. And I'll give you an example here with my trusty TDS meter. I just dipped it in the water and it reads 150 parts per million TDS. Since this is a Caradina tank, I only used RLDI water with a base of zero, then I added GH remineralizer, so I divide that value by 17.9, which gives me a GH degree of hardness of 8.4. You can do similar tests using pH, GH, and KH, and you can use these tests to see what the approximate value is. The key thing is approximate values, not the exact. We typically only measure water parameters when we're doing water changes to see what the parameters are before and the water being added. Or when your fish, plant, or shrimp doesn't look as healthy or if there are any deaths. That's another reason to measure the water parameters. A short primer on how to increase or reduce these values. GH can be increased by mixing GH booster in some RODI water and then add it to the tank. I would only recommend adding at most 20 parts per million daily, or else it will shock your shrimp. KH is very similar, but KH correlates with pH, so when you add more KH booster, the pH will rise also. To lower these levels, you would do a water change and then add in pure RODI water, which reduces the amount. Always test before and after, and don't make too dramatic changes. I hope you enjoyed this updated video and it has educated you more about water parameters for shrimp. Same concept but different values can be applied to fish and plants. For plant health and algae balance, I find they do better in the 130 to 160 parts per million TDS. And in my tank, when it goes over 250 parts per million TDS, more algae issues appear. But keep in mind, fish and plants have a wider tolerable range than the more sensitive shrimp. There are savages like cherry shrimp that can be kept and bred in water such as pH of 8.4 and a TDS of 400. I've done that before and not saying that won't work but it just isn't as ideal. If you ask 10 shrimp keepers on their methods you'll receive 10 different answers as everybody does it slightly differently. This video serves as a general guide and I'll repeat check your water parameters that your breeder is keeping the shrimp in and try to mimic their levels. Thanks for watching my video and I'll be posting more informative topics for planted tanks, shrimp, aquascaping, and everything in between. Stay safe.